what we like to what we like to talk about here just briefly, you know, is the number one racist, like white supremacist, to use that point of reference, racist historical four hundred years. Um, it's it's a, it's a it's a post traumatic, <laughs> you know, enslavement. You know, it, it still exists. And it's not something that we can just do one video. You know, sometimes ones and ones of us who see various angles of it that help to explain and 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 understand and even overstand and overcome it. You know, we might see certain things, and it's not a one time. You know, like people might say, "I'm gonna do one video. I'm gonna talk about this one time to end it all time." No, it's because. Rome wasn't built, they say, in the day, right? So it's little by little, every day they did something. Every day we have to do something to, to undo this, you know, or to, to, to as possible, to undo it. It's something that we have to become continually conscious of because it's easy to become unconscious of it. The whole ham, you know, ham is like the only black man lie, right? That ham was the, the black man and nobody else was black until we get you know, the sons of Noah, of Noah in the Bible, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And, and Ham was the black man. He was a Negroid. You know, th this lie, that's, that's, that is, they say that the cover up is, is worse than the lie, but it's, first of all, let's address the lie because all people, most ones sincerely have been trying to deal with the cover up, you know, or trying to address things that are part of the cover up. Because this lie concerning Ham and the curse of Ham. The curse of Ham is a number one lie that the so-called white man, the Protestant, Christian, Anglo, Anglo-American, whatnot, you know, he lied to himself. First of, all, first of all, he lied on God. He lied on the Bible that he was bigging up because the white folks that were Christian, they were really bigging up the Bible. The Bible was important to them and everything like that. But then they were lying on the scripture to justify Right, to justify chattel slavery and enslavement because many of their white people, even back in the time when they came over here, and we're not saying that they had, you know, kind and warm, fuzzy feelings about so called African or so called black people, because it wasn't known as African back then, you know, but so called black people, not that they had warm, fuzzy feelings about us, but many of them just were sincerely trying to be Christian, white, white Christians, Protestant, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians. And they saw the treatment of these people who were brought over here in the slave ships and everything. And some of them started to speak up about it. So they had to create a lie, right? The, the greatest lie, one of the greatest lies, especially in these modern times ever told, right? Of the greatest lies actually are biblical lies. Right? But especially the greatest lie, curse of Ham. We, we got to begin there, the curse of Ham. When we start to talk about, well, who are black people in the Bible? What do people often do? Oh, Ham, Ham went into Africa. How do you know where Ham went to? <laughs> and we say the Bible, according to the Bible, where the children of Ham, or the children that come from Ham, Ham, Ham went to, we find even from Cush, my right? Cush, one of the descendants, Cush, Cush, his descendant, Nimrod or Namrud, right, went as far as, you know, the Tigris-Euphrates River. And therefore, we can say, as many others have said, that Babylon, ancient Babylon, those ancient kingdoms on the other side, right, on the other side, as it were, <laughs> right, far east. That was far east Ethiopia, far east Cush. So you talk about Tigris, Euphrates, and Babylon, you know, in Syria and Mesopotamia and all of that. And we see, according to the scripture and according to even archaeology, that the Kushites, right, had a lot to do with ancient, the ancient civilizations over there in the Babylon region. Some even say that, you know, Nimrod, according to the Bible, according to the history, also according to archaeology, where it seems like those peoples, the later peoples that came after the approximate time of the Namrud the Nimrod, they looked up to this figure, this character Nimrod, because they named a lot of places after him. And Nimrod was a Kushite, right? Or we can say an Ethiopian. See, now, doesn't this begin to explain, well, Ethiopia, even today, right, when we look at the different languages, it has many Shemitic languages, you know, like we could say, like the Gutas, the Ethiopic, but it also has many 
Afro-Asiatic or what they would call Afro-Semitic, Afro, you know, Semitic languages, Kamo, Hamito, Hamito, Semitic languages, such as we have Amharic, right? That's a, like a Creole, like has Hamitic and Semitic, you know, words, and like Hebrew. Hebrew also is a Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Semitic language as well. So what does that tell us? That if the language of the Bible, the language of the scripture, is what is defined as being Afro-Asiatic. And the Afro part is the is the Hamo part, the Ham part, the Kam, the Kem, Kemito, Semitic part. If that tells us that Hebrew, the language of the Bible, is part, <laughs> you want to say part black? You see, 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 we'll probably say part black at first, but then that is still buying into the lie and not fully um, addressing, redressing you know, the lie and that curse of ham, the curse of ham lie. Just meditating after the podcast, you know, my earthly father and the book that he wrote, The Antiquities of the Black Race, how he had the first parts of it published back in 1970 in the Mohammed Speaks. And, you know, the controversy even that went on then that he reported to I and some of what in some of my research, I can say, yeah, there was a big effect about that because what he was seeking to do, my earthly father, you know, the, the, his his Islamic adoptive name, you know, Rafiq Abdul, you know, Rafiq Ahmed Abdul Hamid, right? Al Hamidia, right? Academy of Arabic. But he had done this research, right, um, into the antiquity of the black race, but it was based on seeking to address or redress the whole curse of Ham. And this is accepting, you know, like when people talk about, well, the races of the, 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 the races, human race and where we come from. And when they start to say, well, what about the Bible? What does the Bible say? And we know the Bible, the, the King James version of the Bible. Let me say this. The King James version of the Bible is very, very important to the to the the building, as it were, of this Western Gentile world, this world system, this white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, white supremacist, white racist system, the 400-year system, this modern, you could say world global system is based on the King James Version of the Bible. And let me say this here, not just religiously, because some people are going to think we just mean religiously. When I say religiously, as um, Nelly um, Fuller, you know, it was it Nelly Fuller Jr. and Francis Cress Wells saying they spoke about the nine areas of people activity. You know, there's at least nine areas of people activity, you know, involving things like economics, involving things like education, involving things like politics, involving things like labor and war and all of that, right? In addition to so called religion. Right? Because even when we talk about science today, there's a lot of DNA, people talking about DNA, doing archaeological research, researching, you know, bones and looking for DNA and who's who and who's related. to. But see, here's where the problem comes in, right? That's a good aspect, potentially, you know, the research, science, so we can really know, right? But what do we know based on the Bible is based on ignorance, is based on the white man's willing ignorance. He chose right, to sell himself and sell everyone else right, the belief that, well, the reason why they had to treat black people in the Americas and the Caribbean, the Beta Israel over here, right, across the trans-Ethiopic Ocean, why, the reason why they had to treat us so bad right, for their religious audience, their religious folks, was because black people are really Hamites. You know Ham? Ham? Yeah, Ham went into Africa. You ever seen those maps? You know, when they show those maps and they try to show us like, well, this area was Ham and this area over here was Shem and this area was Japheth. And even if some of those maps contain some truth, partial or more so truth, there's still the first lie that the black man is only from Ham. Can you imagine that? The black man was from Ham. I don't even want to go into how they try to make believe. And here's where the, the white Christians, right, the Latter-day Protestant Christians, right, got something from the so-called white Jews, the European Jews. Because when reading and studying some of the, I call it Latter-day, the Latter-day Jewish writings. What you have in a lot of Jewish writings, like Christian writings, you got some things that are very old, some things that they found, 
right? And then you have later things where they, they give their own commentary, their own interpretations. So in our research, we're trying to find all the documentation and to put it in perspective, right? So this right here is definitely some latter day my white so-called Jews, no doubt from 70, 740, 740 AD. Very good book, The Invention of the, um, what's it called? The Invention of the Jewish People. I think it was uh, Shlomo Sands. Sh Shlomo Sands has that book. Abdiel Lewi, Brother Zion Lex, had recommended that particular book right there. Points to a date that we heard a similar date, roughly around the same time period, right? And it's been kind of sealed up at 740 AD. This is when we have um, Eastern European, Khazarian, right? Um, Hittite, you know, also Canaanitish when we look into their roots and everything. Or if we want, want to go by the Bible where, where it says Ashkenaz. Even when we see Ashkenaz there, it's like we see white Americans over here in America, but we know that they don't originally originate from America. I, we are part of this 400 year, you know, conquering, invading and conquering of a country. So in order to persuade the white folks amongst the European Christians that came over here to the Americas, that it's an OK thing that they were doing in the chattel slavery of, you know, we, the black people, our ancestors over here, the beta Israel over here. They had to, first of all, take our name from us because here's what's interesting. There's a lot of research from the same time period where other Europeans, right, and some of the same Europeans, too, had already put two and two together, right, to see the link of Israel, of the Hebrews with black people and black people who were on the continent that up until like six, what was it, 650 Six roughly around 650 or so, we start to see the first attempts to rename, right, the continent, right, that was formerly called on maps and historical references as Ethiopia to rename it to Africa. So they already knew, right, the truth before they put forward this lie. And the lie they put forward was the curse of Ham. But here's the point, my brothers and sisters. Some of the Havarim know we, you know, we've spoken on this before and taught on this and 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 let's do some proclamation and preaching on this right here. That the curse of Ham, why is this such a big the this is a big white lie? <laughs> right? Big white racist lie. Why is the curse of Ham such a big racist white lie? Because the curse of Ham does not appear anywhere, right? Ham being cursed, right? Let's do this right here. Ham being cursed does not appear anywhere, right, in the Bible. Let's do this right here. Let's let's put this let's put this on. Um, bring this back right here so we can go into just share this right here, King James version. Let's let, let's search out two words. Let's search out two words. Let's put curse, right? Curse, right? You see curse right there, and let's put ham as they spell it in the English, right? And, okay, we have three verses. You see, three verses found. You can see where this one here, Judges 9, 57, says the curse of Jotham. Jotham. Now, Jotham is not the same ham. It's really Yotam. Yotam in the Hebrew. Yotam, right? So, let's look at the next one. 109, 28. Psalm 109. Let them curse, but bless thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed. But let thy servant rejoice. This is actually a good verse for us. The once lost, now found. We the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, beta Israel of the West, here in the diaspora. Let them curse. What's, what's their curse? They curse when they say the curse of Ham. They sought to curse, right? We can say the continental black man. By and large, the land of Ham is regarding the continent we call Africa, but they tried to, it's not limited to Africa because we know that there was no artificial borders. They didn't have to ask the white man for no visa or whatnot like that before they traveled. People were free to move. And one great scholar, right, Ethiopian Hebrew scholar, J.A. Rogers, has written from his research, wherever water touches land, you'll find Ethiopians, that's to say black man, there. And when I just talk about Martin, time. We're talking about an ancient. We're looking at ancient time. The further back you go, the more black you go, right? So this is a good verse right here. Keep that verse in mind, Psalm 109, 28, because the Psalm is speaking of what they have done to our people, how they have cursed us, right? They've cursed us, right? But it says, bless thou, but he has blessed us in spite of them cursing us. When they arise, 
right? As we see the rise of white supremacy, you know, white racism, the times of the Gentiles, let them be ashamed. Can't you see the shame? <laughs> Some call it white guilt. No, it's deeper. It goes deeper than even that. But let thy servant. Now, here's the key for us. We ended up in captivity, right? Because our ancestors, our elders had broken the covenant, right? Broken the covenant and didn't fulfill the commandments, right? And by not fulfilling the commandments, they no longer were set apart people. And by doing as other peoples, whether black or white peoples, right? Because non-partial, right? As we say, ayabingi, deaf to white and black down presses. I right? see the see the whole color rhetoric also comes in from the whole curse of ham lie, right? And many religious folks because they think they see some true things in the whole ham shem and Japheth thing. One was black, one was white. So what was the other one? Gray, right? If ham was uh, the one, the only black one. So Japheth, because they say Japheth went to Europe, they say well Japheth must have been white. So how are they looking at these things? Are they looking at things as they were or as they are? You see, so what they was doing, even with the curse of Ham, right, was trying to justify the abomination, right? You know, the, they were doing abomination according to their belief as New Testament white Christians. <laughs> you see, because that virus, remember how the Bible says the enmity, the enmity, right, the serpent seed, versus the seed of the woman, that enmity. The last verse here with curse, and this is not ham either, right? It's Ecclesiastes 10 and 20. It says, curse not the king. No, not in thy thought, not even in your thought. And curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. Check this out here too. See, and this is what gets confused because the curse of ham, right? Which was racism, Right, white supremacy, white race and white supremacy. It gets so bad now that ones move on to they say, well, it's not really about race, it's about class. No, 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 it's about both. <laughs> but it began off with that curse of ham, right? The curse of ham. That's racial there, right? Curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. Right? For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Right? <laughs> So, right here, 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 what we can see very clearly that there's no curse of ham, right? Some people would like to say, well, ham is calm, it's calm, like chemet, chemet, right? Well, let's but put this right here. Let's put curse and let's put Egypt here, right? right? Let's put Egypt. There's five verses right here, right? Five verses. None of these verses, just looking over it, it says none of these verses say Egypt, even Egypt is cursed, right? Is Egypt is cursed. Now, of course, the curse that we find in the Bible, right? And here is where the cover up is worse than the lie, brothers and sisters, is this one verse, curse and Canaan, Canaan, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25. And he says, speaking of Noah, Noah, curse it be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be to his brethren. Now, this verse is loaded in a lot of different ways, and we can reason on it, but let's just suffice it to say the curse of Ham is a lie. Can we be agreed on that fact that the curse of Ham is the big lie, is the big white lie of white supremacy, white racism, the curse of Ham? And therefore, if the curse of Ham Right? The fact that curse and ham is nowhere in the Bible. So how was the white Christians who were Bible thumpers and they was believing and reading the Bible and it was all about the... You remember they broke away from the Roman Catholic thing, the Protestant thing, and they printed Bibles, translated them in languages that they could understand and everything because they wanted to know the truth for themselves and have the Bible. So they had the Bible and the preacher or the pastor came to them and said, the reason why we're treating these black people the beta Israel, the children of Israel, the reason why we're treating the black people the way we're treating them is because they are cursed. And the Bible says so. It's the curse of Ham. Wouldn't you think that one of these Bible-thumping white Gentile Christians that came over to America for charter from, from their mother, you know, Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, came over here to be the daughter of Babylon, wouldn't you think that somebody would have stood up at some time among all these white Bible Christians being diligent about what the Bible saying it was all about the Bible, 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 Bible. You expect one of the Bible, Bible, Bible Christians to say, hey, hold on for a moment, pastor, preacher, whatever they call their, their leaders. Um, there's no 
curse of Ham in the Bible. You would have expected that. And that would have just blown the whole thing up, right? They would have, they would have had to end it. Why didn't they say, this is the next question, follow up right here. Why didn't they say black people, we're treating black people this way because black people be the Canaanites? Because it was too close to the truth of the real matter they was trying to cover up. You see what I'm saying? Because as we read the narrative of the Bible later on, the Canaanites had settled in land that was not theirs, right? And it was the Israelites, right, under the direction of the landlord, the almighty Jah, Jehovah, that was basically evicting the Canaanites. So the Canaanites are like the opposite side of the coin of the Israelites. So instead, what they did is they say, well, curse is Ham. And the curse is the curse of Ham. And the reason why we're treating black people this way is because we can't treat them no other way because they're cursed. It's, it's like God, the Bible has cursed them. But all these Bible thumping re religious folks and everything else that was very high on education. So you have to understand this right here, or you should understand this right here, that when the white man came over here, he was over here, not just as religious zealots, but he was very much on this educational tip. And he felt that the Bible was the best tool to educate his people. It was about reading the Bible. It was about studying the Bible. They started the first school system over here, like in the West, right? In the West, that was like free education was based on the Bible, the reading, the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Even though arithmetic is an A, actually, it sounds like an R. But anyway, the, you know, the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, all was centered on these people's religious zeal to be as holy and righteous to what the Bible say. So how come none of them in the 400 years, <laughs> nearly 400 years, was able to say that the curse of Ham is a lie? Not one, not no one. Right? And so now you have ones and ones who still are believing, well, you see, the, the black man is the Hamite and the white man is the Japhetite and the, well, see, see that's, where, that's where the big question mark comes up. So, so, so if the white man is Japheth, because they say, well, you see, Japheth, the Isles of the Gentiles. But then archaeology tells us a lot of those people, the ancient peoples were melanated and the latter day white people actually did the same thing over there in, in the Isles of the Gentiles in Europe, who, who the same thing that they did in Australia, the same thing they did in America, the same thing that they attempted to do and some would have done in South Africa. They invaded the place, right? Adopted, adapted and adopted the name, right? And basically took it over and sought a genocide to the best of their ability against the native, the ethnic people whose land this was before. And then he used the Bible as a cover, right, to say the white men who came over, the pilgrims and rest them, they were saying stuff like um, they're the new Israel. Right? They were believing themselves to be the new Israel. I thought they were just white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christians. How, how in the world they become the new Israel? Right? Because they are the church. They're the new Israel. And then when it came to America, they said, look, there's these people over here. Well, if we're the new Israel, they must be the Canaanites. So see, they, that's how they use the term Canaan, the Canaanites, to basically say the Native American, the Native American, the indigenous people over here in the Americas, right? Referred to as, quote, Indians, end quote, right? That they actually were the Canaanites. So who are these people you're bringing on these ships across the Ethiopian Ocean? Who are these people you're bringing on the trans-Ethiopian ocean slave trade? Who are they? Oh, oh, they are black. They're the Hamites. They, they are the Hamites. And the Bible says, curse be Ham. Okay, okay, th that explains it. Wow. W was it willful ignorance? Was it willing ignorance? I mean, surely they were promoting reading of the Bible. So I'm sure when somebody says, this curse of Ham... What about this? They went to the biblical story. Ain't no party focused on the story. Oh, uh, a ham walked in there and he saw the nakedness of his father. Ain't know what the fake religious leaders and teachers amongst the Gentiles, the white folks did then? Because they identified ham as being the black man. They said that not only did he just go in and see the nakedness of his father, 
but that he engaged in some abomination. Not to even get into the details, but they actually have wrote this alongside their so-called religious interpretation of Genesis. That basically uh, Ham, when he went in there, he did some perverse act to his father, some sexual act to his father. This is what the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, this was how they were basically preparing their people that you got to be careful of these black folks that were bringing across the trans-Ethiopian Ocean slave trade because then they would lie later on and say, well, actually the Ethiopian Ocean, we're going to rename it because if these people know Ethiopia, they might wake up. Because you know what the Bible says, are you not as the children of Israel? No. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So if they recognize, well, we came across the trans-Ethiopian ocean. Well, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians? Oh, we Israel. Oh, this is who we really be. They might just wake up, right? So they said those things. And here's, I'm, I'm going to get out of this right here because it's something that not one video to or, or reasoning, you know, or just this, this is a multi-level something. But it's this is like, you remember in Star Wars, there was like the Death Star and there was like to bring down the Death Star it was very fortified. But there was this little small area, this vent, this little vent that they had exposed. But it'll be really hard. You had to be an expert shot to hit it. And this is that very point right here concerning the curse of Ham. Because once the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and the racist interpretation of the table of nations is destroyed and we put it in its proper historical scientific context, then and only then, right, can we almost like begin again, like humanity in a sense, almost like reborn, rebirthed it. But until that time, as long as people believing that, well, one man and one woman, Noah and his wife, had three different children who were three different races, speaking three different languages, you know, at least, come on, or speaking of multiple, what kind of crazy poltergeist thing this is? This is where the cover up is worse than the lie, because if they had gone to the Bible, if they really had read the Bible, people say, well, what was the nakedness? What was the nakedness? You remember, it was about the nakedness. Now... They teach, a lot of the white Christians teach this on other points, right? They say, well, let's use the Bible to explain the Bible. How come they didn't use the Bible to explain the Bible regarding the curse of the so-called, the so-called, the pseudo-curse, right? The pseudo-curse of, 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 of Ham, right? Of the so-called black man. The black man was never cursed, right? Because for the black man to be cursed, in essence, that means Adam would have had been cursed. The first man, woman, and child would have been cursed. And see, even science proves this in the DNA. Dominant gene, recessive gene. Recessive genes devolve or evolve from the dominant gene. The dominant gene, you know, look at the oldest bones, where are they found, so forth and so on. The oldest people, the oldest civilizations, so forth and so on. The real oldest civilizations. They are found among so-called black people. But they said that it was because he saw the nakedness of his father, right, Ham, right? And remember, Ham was the father of Canaan. They like to throw that one in there, right? Well, then if Ham is the father of Canaan, right, if Ham is the father of Canaan, and they were trying to say to their white Christian people that came over to invade and steal this country, they were saying that the American Indians are the Canaanites because they were identifying themselves as the Israelites and America was like new Canaan to them. In Genesis 9:22, it says, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Right? This is what they say that the Bible here says, And Ham and Ham saw the father. The father of Canaan saw the nakedness of his father. So how can we use the Bible to explain the Bible? Right? Now we see further on where the two sons, Shem and Japheth, where they went in for garment, you know, walked backward, covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were backward and they saw not the nakedness, their father's nakedness. But look at this right here. Using the Bible to explain the Bible in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 7. Because get this. We are taught that Moshe, right, is the reputed author, right, or the compiler of the ancient, we say, scrolls of the ancient patriarchs of the Torah, right, the five books of Moshe. So what's the first book? It's Bereshith, it's Genesis. So when we get to the third book, the same author here, right, 
Leviticus 18 and 7 says, The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness, right? That's what I said, the nakedness of thy father and the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. But notice what it says about the nakedness. She, uh-oh, is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. In verse 8, the next verse says, The nakedness of thy father's wife thou shalt not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. Boom. Gotcha. So Leviticus chapter 18, verse 8, it states that the nakedness, the father's nakedness is not the father's nakedness in, in saying like the father himself directly, but according to the Hebraicism, according to the allegorical, metaphorical, you know how people use language. You know, I often use the example, like somebody said, I'm going to kick your your backside. You know what I mean? They don't literally mean they're going to do that, but they, we use words in a way. So they use words in a way. So the nakedness of thy father's wife is the father's nakedness. So that means when we go back to this first area in Genesis, in Moses' first book, chapter 9, verse 22, and Ham or Kam, Ham was the father of Canaan, right? He saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. So what did he really see? According to the Bible, according to the Bible, he saw his father's nakedness, which means he must have saw his father's wife's nakedness, which must mean that he saw his mother's nakedness. Now, whatever happened, whatnot, we don't know. The scripture, Moshe, you know, the scribes are silent on this right there. But what we do know, it must have something to do with the father of Canaan and with Canaan. You know what I'm saying? You remember what happened with um, Lot and his two daughters? You see what I'm saying? Why would Noah, Noah, why would Noah, and once he woke from his drunkenness his, you know, and all that, right? He would then say what he said concerning Canaan, right? His grandson. Unless, why would he curse or call these consequences upon his grandson unless there was something of question concerning his origin. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is that if, if according to this, Ham did anything, it must have involved his father's nakedness, according to Torah, which meant his father's wife, his father's wife and or his mother. Now people say, oh, that's worse than before. No, is it? Because doesn't Ham, Kam, we go into Kemet, we go into ancient Egypt, it seems as though the matriarchal connection is very, very important. And no one has explained to us the real origins of that. You know, we can get into that a little bit more so. That's not the point right here. What we're seeking to explain is that the curse of Ham, right? The curse of Ham is the biggest lie, is the big white lie of white supremacy. Right. And it's un until we address that. And by addressing that, we have to address the fact that all of them were what we can call is black. I know this is very controversial, but when we look at the reality, right, of we can say the human race and the black race as the origin, right, of the human race. Right. And every type of phenotype, you know, features is found among black people. I'm saying apart from white folks. I'm not talking about mulatto or people who may be mixed. No, but apart from those who are mixed, right? Say with white people and a black person, so forth and so on, you have these features, right? Amongst us, the phenotypes. You have the various different types of complexion among black peoples, right? right? And peoples and earth peoples before the white man. So even before the white man ever comes up on the scene and becomes a, a force to be reckoned with, we can say in the world, from the Greco, the Greco-Roman times coming down to even 400 years ago, right? We have this diversity. Genetics has also verified this. Genetics also backed this up as well. You know, when we start to look at genes, the gen genetic connection. Anyway, brothers and sisters, I want to touch on this a little bit more. And here's where we have to go to our ransom. <laughs> Egypt is our ransom, right? Egypt was given to us and for us for a ransom, right? And what does that mean, Chabarim? But the first thing first, have to address the lie 
right, of white supremacy and even show how they even have tried to counterfeit, how they try to counterfeit a lot of archaeology, right? Like when they do this right here, right? Red, white, brown, black, yellow. This was superimposed on ancient Egypt artifacts. This is based on the European, the white man's interpretation because he is trying to justify even what he has done to say, well, well, everybody had slaves. Everybody had, no, everybody had servants, right? Some treated their servants better. Some treated their servants worse. But everybody has servants. Some people they even had as bond servants. Some people had servants that they had to treat or they treated so badly that it could be comparable to what people call slavery, the chattel slavery of the Beta Israel. Right? But no one really had slaves because slave even is a word that's rooted in white races and white supremacy. The word Slav that has to do with a group of their peoples, not our people, Slavs. With that point right there, the curse of Ham is the big white lie, the big white lie. And until we come to the foundation, the groundation that all of the descendants of one man and one woman, right, must have been somehow similar and not one was a white man, you know, Japheth wasn't born as a white man, right, and Shem wasn't born as a gray man, right. Was Ham a black man? Well, yes, Ham was a black man as his brothers, Shem and Japheth, Japheth was black, and we can prove that even historically, even from ancient archaeology. So with that word right there, shalom, chabarim, shalom, we pick up on this a little bit more, right, and seek to review, you know what I mean? Seek to review who's who, right, who's who, right, who's who right here.